morning and uh, praise the Lord. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you in this very brand new uh, week that uh, the Lord has enabled us to, uh, again to see as we continue to thank God for the recent Christ, as we continue to appreciate the great things that God is doing in our lives. I want again to assure you that uh, in this week, may we seek the grace of God to lead us and to guide us, even as we purpose to hear what he has for us, even as we purpose to hear uh, what God intends for us, even as we continue to uh, commemorate the uh, uh, Easter season, even as we continue and as we purpose to allow Christ Jesus to be the, cen uh, the center of our ministry, to be the center of our worship, even as we approach the presence of God uh, with praise and with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much because of this day, this very good morning that God you have made. We appreciate, oh God, that uh, you have made us who we are today. The Father that you've come, oh God, it is because of your grace, because of your mercy. Oh God, that's why we've chosen to praise you, to glorify your name and to magnify your name. We thank you so much, oh God. Now, even as we start off this week, we pray that you may bless us. You may uplift us even as we'll continue to seek your face, even as we'll continue to hear from you. Our prayer is that God, you may do unto us according to your word. You may bless us. You may guide us. You may direct even our thinking as we continue even to comprehend of the greatest work of the cross that Christ you did and on the third day you resurrected. We worship you and we honor you for this is our humble prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, welcome and uh, may God uh, enable us even as we continue to work on our uh, uh, Dalsatian theme as well as our theme of this month, our parish theme. Uh, we connect the two of them as we seek God to lead us and to guide us. You see, as uh, the Dalsatian theme uh, says that we should ensure the altar fire is continuously burning uh, and, and already it, it gave us a responsibility that we must not let it go out. We must not allow it to, come, to go out. We have a responsibility, a responsibility that I've been given, a responsibility that you have been given. There is work that we need to do, the work of putting firewood, the work of ensuring that truly the altar fire is continuously uh, is, uh, uh, burning. The same way, even as we, uh, we celebrated the recent Christ, we should continuously allow ourselves to continue allowing that uh, Christ with all the greatest work or the greatest ministry of resurrection to have an impact in our lives as we uh, seek God in this uh, month uh, with our theme of authentic Easter. Authentic uh, Easter meaning that there is something that is not ordinary there is something that we need to put the, our impact in the whole issue of the Easter season. And today, brethren, allow me just to mention one thing, a few things as we will continue, for us to understand this Easter, the original, the original, the original uh, principle of Easter, because to me, I trust, and uh, allow me today to just uh, share with you about uh, the faith that we have, that we should believe. At the point or at the incident or the conversation at the tomb there, we see uh, Mary Magdalene uh, encountering with Jesus. And uh, Jesus reminded her about who he was and he reminded her about the things that he said when he was alive. He told, him, he told her that uh, uh, I, as, as it was prophesied, uh, I, I will die, and on the third day, I will resurrect. The book of John, Gospel according to St. John, chapter 24, verse 9 uh, through to 12, it says, When they came uh, from the tomb, they told all these things, the eleven, and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told these to the apostles. 
but they did not believe the women because their words seems to be like nonsense. Peter, however, got up, ran, ran to the tomb, bending over. He saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. We see Peter, in this case, he went away, but he was still wondering. Even after they, they got the information, even after Mary Magdalene took the information to this uh, the other disciples, as, as uh, up there uh, in verse 6, he is not here. This is the words of the angel himself. He's not, remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of a sinner, be crucified, and on the third day raised again. And uh, these are the words of the angel. Or the words, uh, probably you can say that they are words of Jesus. And they remember, they remember the words, the words of Christ Jesus himself. But we see the disciples who are in doubt. We see the disciples who did not believe of the words of the, the, um, uh, the women who took the news to them. And even after they received the news, they ran to the tomb. And even after they reached the tomb, we, uh, as we have uh, read in verse 12 of, they find that there are just strips and the linens which were lying down them, uh, there by, the, by itself, by themselves. But they went away. But what was full in their mind? They were wondering to themselves what had happened. I don't know, friend, if up to date you might be wondering what had happened. I don't know if today you might be having this message of Jesus the message of the risen Christ, but still you are wondering if truly Christ came and died for your sin. This morning, I just want to be very, very soft to you and uh, deliver this very kind message to you, the message of the Lord, that indeed we need to have no reason to wonder of what happened because Christ is no longer in the tomb, Christ resurrected, Christ himself is alive and he lives forever and ever. So even as we are thinking of authentic Easter, it's good for us to shun down or to, uh, to take out or to blow away that thing that the enemy may try to bring to us, uh, the issue of doubting, the issue of wondering, or the issue of trying to imagine and, and what is this? that really happened because to some extent the uh, resurrection event we find that uh, uh, even the, the soldiers who are guarding the, the body of Jehovah, uh, guarding the tomb, they were, uh, they were bribed so that they can go and tell the lies. And you know the lies that to some point in time you might be having is that through the recent Christ or through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are not assured of our salvation. And Paul points very clearly by saying that we believe in the, the risen Christ because uh, uh, he, the, God resurrected him from the dead. And since he resurrected, we believe also that even if we die, we will be resurrected. Even if we die, we will live again. And now that is where our faith is put to test. Our faith is put to test in a way that all the time when we go to the body of our loved ones, when we go and uh, we have that sort of moments and we cry a lot. And uh, sometimes even as the scripture encourages us, it's, it is telling us that we should not uh, mourn like people who are faithless or people who does not have faith. Why? Because we have faith that even if we might have lost our loved ones, even if they might have gone before us one day, one time. That is the faith. I'm sure about the faith. The faith that we are having is what tells us or it is what that is, is what is speaking to us from deep inside our inner spirit, telling us that when we die or when our loved ones die, provided they had a relationship with Jesus Christ, that is not the end of them. That is not the end of their story. Meaning that in as much as we believe in as much as we have a relationship with Jesus, in as much, we, as, as much as we have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives, even if we lost our loved ones, even if at one point in time we find that we are not in this world, 
we have the assurance. Assurance that we live again. We have assurance that one time Christ, even as the Bible says, if you can read in Revelation, that we, those who have died in Christ, will be the first to be risen, are the first who are going to resurrect. But the turnaround of everything is that do you believe? Do you believe, or we can say that uh, probably you might be like uh, one of uh, the disciples who after, after bending over, after he saw the strips of Jesus lying uh, by themselves, he went away. But he was not a happy man. He wondered a lot for himself what had happened. Probably what, what, what was coming in his mind is, uh, is it true that what the soldiers are saying, they came and stole uh, his body, the body of our, uh, of our, of our, our rabbi, or uh, the body of our teacher, the body of our master, is it true? But again, they will comprehend and try to think of the prophecies or the words of Jesus when he was together with them. But in as much, in as, much as there are a lot that they had to comprehend, uh, the turnaround of everything, is that the faith, the faith that they had. At some point, Jesus reprimanded them, where is your faith? Do you believe that Christ is alive? And because he's alive, we, me and you, should live. And because I should live, I should not be silent. I will testify of the goodness of Christ Jesus in our lives. So may God bless you, may God keep you, may God see you through, may God scatter the darkness from before your path and uh, uplift you even as you continue with this day. I speak uh, God's blessing upon you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.